Hello everyone, in this tutorial we are going to cover how to make this very cool looking beach scene here. Uh, it's been a dream of mine to make this crashing waves and have them in very intensity for a long time. And so now I actually have learned how to do the rendering of the water, rendering of the, um, the uh, foam, and learned some tricks. Now this, is, this video is for the newest release of Maya 2017 which just came out a few weeks ago. And so service packs have not been implemented and um, hopefully with the service packs they'll actually have Arnold materials that will make this whole process a little easier. But once you see how easy this is, you'll kind of chuckle with it because it's very easy. There's only nine things you need to change in the standard Arnold shader um, to make the water and then there's just a few changes you have to make to make the foam. So it's not that hard once you see how to do it. but that can sometimes be very hard to figure it out. And I give kudos to the guy um, on the Autodesk forums who helped me tremendously with this whole process. I, you'll see here in the video, I, I give him kudos when I show you those, it's right at the beginning. But I am making this video, this very thing that I'm talking on right now, after I've already made the entire tutorial. So this literally is what we are going to get, not something like this, but this exact same thing. And so um, I think that's it. Uh, so just remember that this is the first version of Maya 2017 that we are doing here. And you can download this file from my server and simulate this out on your own and then render it and um, see if it looks similar. The um, the HDR that you see in here, I show you where to get that in another tutorial on making the sky dome. And I show that real briefly in the tutorial too, where to get that. Uh, or actually how to watch that video that shows where to get this HDR because it is uh, free to download. Um, I don't know if it's free to use in projects um, other than maybe tutorial training tutorials like this but um, anyway that's how that goes. So uh, I hope you enjoy the uh, tutorial here. Okay so this is the scene that we left off with um, at the end of the last tutorial. Now I did I did make that five minute correction um, showing you how that uh, with the liquid and with the mesh or the foam how I had so I go to a container here, how I had the caches enabled. Well, when you make a, a cache in Maya, it, it, ch it checks these boxes automatically so that it loads in the cache. Well, obviously you don't have the cache and it was looking for it, so you couldn't simulate. So um, I apologize if that caused any confusion. I'm sure it did. So I'm just gonna disable the cache properties here. And I did, I did do this and save it as a, a second a third file and that YouTube video at the bottom um, but I'm just doing that here real quick just to disable these if, if it's not already done okay so those are disabled so now um, I can I was just check my bifrost options enable background processing that's all good I'm just going to hit rewind here and, and you can see the bifrost here is calculating some fluid and um, I'm just going to just rotate this view a little differently here and it's done calculating it'll plop in some fluid so then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit play here run it out to about 110 frames and then come back and um, show you how to go about putting a material on this and adding foam and stuff of that nature now by the way too, my foam parameters I need to change so before I simulate this let's go back and change these foam parameters I am um, right here um, I'm going to up these so I get more pram, uh, more foam particles. So I do have some cheat sheet here, um, cheat sheets, cheat, cheat sheets. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is up my emission rate and change the speed, churn, and curvature in um, my here. So I'm just going to take this to 9,000, get some more particles in here, drop this down to 0.5. Oops, I think I hit the wrong button there. Stop this. I don't need it to calculate here. So 0.5 and 0.2. So that will uh, give me more particles. Um, how do I get rid of this? There we go. So that's all I need to do is just change those three values there, and I should be able to include these uh, PDFs. If not, this is just a reference for me to make the tutorial faster. So I don't know if I'll include this or not, but I just changed that to 3,000, um, 0.5, and 0.2. So that will give us some more foam, and now I'm going to render, and um, and then I'll be back here in a, in a few minutes. So I'll render out to about 110. 
Okay, so I took this out to 94 frames. It was plenty to get some foam in here. And that's really the was the goal and to get some um, more interesting looking water. So we're going to um, then move on from here. And what we're going to do first, I've got a little cheat sheet here that shows what I'm gonna do. So I'm first gonna make the sky dome, the AI sky, and um, get some settings made there that um, are correct. And um, so let's go from there. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is if you, by, by the way, too, um, the uh, I made those little corrections on those videos. So you probably found found this video that I'm doing right now uh, from this video here where I actually made this simulation. But um, I didn't know at the time how to do the rendering. And um, so anyway, I was working with a a guy on the Maya forums here, and I'll. Um, show you what that is. So if you search in the Maya forums under shading and lighting and rendering and you search for this uh, rendering foam using Arnold Maya 2017. So I'd figured out how to do some of the water but I was getting all this weird foam stuff and I was having a lot of problems and um, this was the final solution that uh, I accepted and look how beautiful that is and I'm going to show you how to recreate something like that. And so you, it's, it'll be helpful to go through here because I've included some of the files, showed some of the problems I was having, see all the foam was all black there, and and how uh, that got changed around, and some of the problems I ran into, and some of the um, I'm going to show you, try to show you everything here in the YouTube video. But understanding what the problems you're going to run into is very helpful. So um, anyway, so I'd really like to thank this uh, guy right here. He helped me a bunch. So if you go go onto this forum, look at some of this stuff, and give him kudos for some of his uh, his um, responses here, because he without him I never would have gotten this. I just wouldn't have gotten this. And the foam rendering and the water is just something I've struggled with for a long, long time. Okay, but um, that five minute add on video shows you the problem I had with the cache, and then another video I did um, shows how to do the uh, AI sky. So um, if I go to create your studio here, this uh, sky dome lighting tutorial uh, right here, I'll open this in a new tab. This shows how to do the sky in a more detailed 20 minute, one minute uh, version here. I'm gonna do this really quick, but if you wanna watch that one, you can uh, watch that tutorial on how the sky dome works and uh, that nature. So let's just go through and make it real quick. And what I'm gonna do to start off, I'm gonna go up to Arnold. I'm gonna go to lights, sky dome light. And this will load up here very quickly. And the sky dome light, then what I want to do is attach an H HDR uh, file to it. <clears throat> so it should pop up here once it's all ready. And so right now the sky dome just projects the color white. So I'm going to put a map to it. And the map is going to be a file. So I'm going to left click there. And then the file, I can actually select an HDR. And in the other video, uh, I show where to get this HDR. It's uh, free. So you can go watch and see where I got that. So I'm going to open that up. So you're going to see that it looks a little weird. It looks a little dark. So you just got to make sure you change the color space to linear or to raw. And um, that's about it. I'm going to go up one and just put in a higher resolution here. I think it might actually be 3500, but anyway, this works. It'll work good enough. So that's the resolution we're going to use there. Just make sure that the format is lat long because that's what this HDR file is. Some HDRs are these different styles here. So it's really all we have to deal with right here. Um, and what I'm going to do then now is you see the, the, the dome light is going to make this light for the, um, it's gonna basically light our environment. And now you see the sky dome here in the render, in the uh, viewport, but if you actually render this, this will all be black. So we gotta add an AI sky to make it look like this. So what we're gonna do now is go into the um, environment tab of the render settings. So I'm gonna click that one and go into our old render. And we're gonna go down to this environment tab here and I'm gonna click background. Okay. So I'm going to create a sky shader. So this is this is quite confusing because you'll see here that see this is an AI sky dome. So this is going to be our light source. Yet this thing that I just made is called AI sky. 
And so this confused me for a while, but the sky is going to be our background. Now, I too could tie this to another HDR file, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, here to the Hypershade window. And it's going to show you just a little bit how to do this. Now, I am not very good at the Hypershade window, but I do know how to clear the screen. That's this button right there, the little stars. Now, it doesn't erase anything. It just clears my workspace there. And then I'm going to go over to um, uh, Lights. I'm going to just highlight the Sky Dome. And then I'm going to hit the this plus thing to add it to our scene here. Now, it doesn't show the inputs and outputs, so you got to hit this button right here to show the inputs and outputs. So there, now we're seeing everything. And what I'm going to do is then go over to the material from my AI Sky. See how the AI Sky actually acts like a material? Um, so I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to click this button to add that to my workspace. And so now what I'm going to do is just bring this down here and just tie the same HDR to the AI Sky Color. So now we only have one HDR image that is being used versus two of them. Not necessary, but it does save a little bit of time. So that's all there is to it. And then if we go back over to the AI Sky, you'll see that it now has, instead of a checkerboard here, it is connected to the color. So that's that HDR file that it's, it's hooked up to. Now, the other thing too is that what's kind of weird is it doesn't look like the AI Sky is actually um, connected to a transform, but it is connected to a transform node here. So when you click on that, you now can rotate the AI Sky. And right now, both of them are rotated at zero, um, or they're not rotated at all, I should say. I'm gonna close this. So what you're seeing is something like this in the background. Now, I want the water as the background, and so if I rotate the AI Sky to 120 degrees, hit enter, and then I go to the AI Dome and rotate that to 120 degrees. Now they're both at least lined up. So you gotta remember the, the dome light and the AI Sky are both spheres. And in the viewport here, they look the same. Um, now the reason why you didn't see it here is there's there's a reason for it. There has to be. If you want to see what it's actually looking like, go to the either one of these legacy views, and you can then see what the background will look like. But you'll lose the water. Okay, so you can see now that our view is going to look more like that, and that's okay. But then to see the water again, make sure you go back to the original viewpoint 2.0. Um, now you'll background one update. Um, so either that's a bug or I just don't know how to do it, um, but you can't see it. And with either one of these selected, you can actually use this rotate tool. Um, and then if you have it selected to the other viewport, you know, one of these things, you can then see the rotate and line it up that way. So that will work. You just have to make sure both of them are turned the same direction, unless you don't want them the same direction. In my other video, I show that how I don't have uh, the two at the same rotation. You actually see two suns in the reflections. Okay, but so the AI Sky Dome is going to be our source of light, but this this um, AI Sky, I have to turn off under render stats here, I have to turn off visible and diffuse and visible and glossy. So I'm going to disable both of those. And because I don't, the um, Sky Dome is also going to give us diffuse and glossy, so I don't want it to double up. And this is where I had the two suns in the other video, um, which is really neat to see because it, it makes these make more sense. So anyway, I'm going to go back over to my cheat sheet here. I've done the sky dome, the AI rotation, tie the HDR maps, uncheck visible. And then this, I, th I think I actually have to have this checked. I, I got to keep, I got to look at this here. Um, I can't remember if I want that checked or not. So let me just check that. That's based on my notes. And so that's setting up with the lighting. So now we can go into the rendering and Remember what we're going to be rendering is we're going to be rendering the, the, the blue water particles as a mesh. So the blue, the blue particles won't be rendered at all. However, the foam particles will be. So there's a couple different things we're going to be doing. So this is the, where we're going to attach our a liquid material, but then the foam particles are where we're going to attach our foam material. So the liquid here, uh, we won't be using um, other than for the simulation and to set up a few uh, parameters here. So if we go to the liquid and we go to liquid shape, we can go to bifrost meshing and we're gonna enable this. So if you just enable it with the parameters set there, you'll see that it enables pretty quickly and you'll see here that the processor kicks in for a little bit until the mesh is formed. Now we're seeing the particles and the mesh uh, together. Um, and by the way too, I'm going to just turn off the foam. So I'm gonna click the foam and I'm gonna hit H to hide the foam. So we can just see the water. 
And so we'll go back to the liquid and here's our Bifrost mesh. And um, what I'm gonna do is turn up the resolution a little bit. Now be very cautious with this value. If you go cranking that up to three or four, I mean, you're gonna be sitting there forever waiting for it to compute a mesh. As you'll see, there was my uh, value at one, resolution of one, and here's my, here's how long it takes at a resolution of 1.5. So it takes longer to calculate it because there's more resolution. So you'll, you'll notice that there's two ways to gain resolution. And the ideal way is to actually have more particles. Um, this is the resolution of the mesh based on the uh, particles. But if you look in here, see how few particles there are? And there's, there's just all these blobs. So the more particles you have, the smaller these pieces become. Now you can adjust the factors here too, but eventually these particles are so far apart that it won't make water. Um, and so the particles would be there, but there won't be any mesh there for you to render. So it's just something to keep in mind that more particles is better. And then these factors here are described in the literature. It's just a matter of playing around with these and seeing what they do. So um, from there, what, uh, I'll go back to my cheat sheet here and we'll just show this. So I changed, I enabled the mesh, I resolution factor, uncheck the mesh shape opaque setting in Arnold. So what, um, what this is here, um, where's the Arnold settings here? I think it's, um, oops. So I want to actually be in the mesh. So here I go to the mesh, and here I go to Arnold. So the mesh shape should show up in Arnold. And by default, all materials or all objects are opaque. So you have to uncheck that because water um, has transparency, and so that's what we want. So this is turned on by default, I guess, to save render time and, and normally. Um, so it doesn't try to calculate the transparencies. But anyway, we want it off. Back to the cheat sheet. Um, let's do the water material here. So the water material is pretty cool. So what I did is I made a PDF showing you the comparison. So this is kind of nice. Um, let's see if I can just close this out. There we go. So here's the water material we want, and here's what a standard shader is. And so all we have to do is change these, these pieces here that are in, um, that have the red arrows. So there's nine different things, or yeah, nine different things we have to change to make a nice water. Now, you can't get this to look like this in um, Maya. You have to scroll. You can't get them looking like this together without scrolling them individually. But I did have these both open in Maya. I just had to scroll down. I just took screen captures to get it all put together like this. So um, let's go over and just take a look. And what we'll do is we will create a standard material for this. Now, if you go to the mesh shape right now, remember we're in the mesh and we're looking for the material for the mesh. It automatically gets design, assigned a, a sample material, which is the Bifrost liquid material. But this is for the, I believe this is for the mental ray renderer. And we're now using Arnold. So hopefully in the next service pack, they change this so that they have a Bifrost liquid material made for Arnold. Um, and that would, be, that would be very handy. And same with a foam shader made for Arnold. And I'm, I'm sure they're gonna do that. But anyway, so we wanna change some of those um, options that we had over here. So let me pull back that uh, look here. And, oops, I'm sorry, ah, come, come on. There, slow that down a little bit. And so we gotta take the diffuse all the way down, all the way down to zero. So let's take the, um, how am I gonna do this here? Oh, first of all, I gotta assign a new material. And when I assign a new material, this one will disappear. So with the mesh selected, I'm gonna right click over this. I'm gonna assign a new material. Okay, I'm holding down the right mouse button as I'm doing this. I let go and I'm gonna to go to the shader. I'm gonna to go to an AI standard. And now you'll see that that got replaced. So if I go back to the mesh again, the AI standard is now connected to the mesh. Okay, that's important. And so there, now we can change the parameters. So if we look to that little cheat sheet thing, I have to take the diffuse, go this way. I have to take the diffuse all the way down to zero. So here's a normal standard shader. You see that that's what this looks like. So I gotta take the weight all the way down to zero. So that's one thing. Um, the rest of that part is fine. Under specular, oh, and under extended controls, I have to take this down to zero. That's a big deal. So extended controls, take this down to zero. Under specular, you'll see that I you have to crank the specular up to one and then take the roughness down to like 0.05. So specular here, I take the weight up to one and then I'm just gonna type, bring this down to about 0.05. And 
and then go back and look again. And I have to turn on the Fresnel uh, lens here, or Fresnel calculations. Now, um, here are the extended controls and the refraction. I'm going to turn open all these. And so you can see the comparison over here. Um, so extended controls, nothing changes there. Reflection, nothing changes. Exit color, nothing changes. Refraction is where four things have to change. So right here, here's the refraction tab. I'm going to take the weight all the way up to one. I'm going to take the IOR value down to 1.33. That's index of refraction. And I'm going to turn on Fresnel. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to drop the trans, transparent, uh, transmittance a little bit and just add a slight uh, blue color to it. Just a slight tint there. It's not necessary, but um, so anyway, so now that matches up with this. I change those four things there, and then I change these five things up here, and we should be good to go with the material color. So here I just, and I'll put this PDF on the website too. Here's the standard shader values, and I just showed the ones that needed to be changed. Okay, so back to my cheat sheet here. I did the water material. I'm going to change some values in the camera. So I go to my camera settings here, the render settings, and in Arnold Render, I'm going to change this to th what do I want this um, three and then four ones. So one, 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 and then two. Yeah, um, wait a minute, three. One, 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 and two. I think I just got an extra. No, I got three ones in there. So uh, that's exactly what I need. And I'm not using subsurface scattering. That might be able to be at zero, which might make it even faster. Okay, so that is that. Now the ray depth here, I want to pump these up a little bit more. So the rays are what shoot through the water and create some neat effects. So I'm going to go 12 and 6, 6, 6, 6. Volume, what did I want that at? Zero and then 12 for transparency depth. Okay. And this transparency depth does not need to be 12. This probably could actually be one or two because um, I'm not going through multiple layers of transparent material here. So this is just what I had. Trust me, these values play around with these. I just, this is what was working. So I left it at that. So I don't think I know what I'm doing here because I do not. Um, and Let's see what else. And then I'm going to reposition the view. Well, I actually kind of like the positioning I have. The water is going to be behind this. So what I'm going to do is just, um, I am going to get rid of my stuff here. These, I'm just going to, and I'm just going to hit H on the keyboard so that I just have that sticking out like that. Now, if, if, you actually, if I actually turn off the points in the liquid here, you'll see that this whole thing is black. And that's what you want. That's what you want this to look like. So in the screen here, it's going to look very strange, but when I hit render here, it's going to hopefully look really good here. So let's um, just um, pull this up here, and that's what I'm going for. That's not what this is right now. So let's just render this, and I'll pause here. And uh, Now, by the way, that HDR has to get converted to a format that Maya likes. And so only having one of them speeds things up a little bit. So let me just pause, and I'll be back. <clears throat> now look how cool that is. That is just... That to me is so neat. I, I cannot tell you how cool that is. Um, now remember that what you see in the water is obviously from the light all around it, right? So, um, so this uh, HDR is obviously critical to this. And what I'd suggest doing is with all those different parameters, um, and I need to do go through and do this more too. Is play with some of these values, uh, especially obviously the ones we changed, um, and and see what happens. Um, obviously the IOR you're not going to change. In the Fresno, I gotta change some of these things, but um, but but play around with these things, and you can learn a little bit more about what they do. And like I said, I need to do that too. But that's a that, to me that was a big step when I when I shown how to do the water. I was like, oh man, that is great. Now that we have that, I'm gonna add the foam. Now I changed the foam creation numbers already um, before we actually did before I actually did the. Uh, simulation here. But now I'm going to look at um, the particle size. So this is the render particle size. Now remember we turned off the foam. So let me uh, just save this here so I don't lose that. And I'm going to go back and re-enable the foam. And so now you see the foam in here. But if you render this it'll look really silly. It'll look kind of blackish. It's not real cool. Um, 
And if we go to the foam material, here again we have another one of the uh, uh, Maya shaders that I believe was originally for a mental ray. So we don't want that. So let's go back in and we're going to make a new material for that. Now I have my foam selected again. See it's selected here so it's highlighted here with the green box. I'm just going to right click. Now while I'm holding that down I'm going to assign a new material. And I'm going to go to the shader. I'm going to go to the uh, standard. And so here we go. Now here if I go back to my cheat sheets I've got foam parameters here. Um, so those are the churn settings that I wanted. Uh, let's see here, where is, there's that opaque setting I had to do, here's the bifrost meshing, here's the foam shape. Um, so, oh yeah, I wanted to change the size of the particles first and then go change the material. So I'm going to change the size down to this point zero zero six while I'm here. So there you're not actually in the standard material. Here we're going to go back over to the foam. Now, by the way too, we'll see that when I click this, that that material is going to be at the end of it. Okay, so there. So it got rid of that um, other material for the Bifrost foam and it put this AR standard in it, which is right now just this gray generic start um, AI standard foam. But um, I lost my train of thought already. Um, oh, yeah, particle size. So um, in here under, you actually have to be. Where is that? I think actually think in the liquid. Let me see. No, you can do it from foam shape right here. I want to turn the render particle size down to 0.00. Is it zero, 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 six. Let me see what number that is. Yeah, two zeros and then a six. Okay. So six one thousandth. So whatever that value means, and you can just keep bumping that down. Um, the smaller that number, the cooler it is, but the more particles you need to actually see them. So that's, that's a cool thing. Now this point size here is just what it shows in the screen. So don't, you know, it just shows the size there. That does not matter to us. We want to know the render size. And in previous versions of Maya, you didn't have access to this. You had to actually type it in down here in the, the Mel script or whatever that thing is called. Um, but now you have direct access to it. So that's that. And now we're going to go over to the material and just change that. It's not much to do there. But here all you're going to do is you're going to take the diffuse and I did take a screen capture, but I just forgot to put in the PDF. So you're gonna take your diffuse and crank that all the way up. And the other, yeah. Okay, the other big thing is this backlighting value. Um, so the specular we're gonna take all the way down. Well, it's already down, um, so we don't have to change anything there. And the refraction, we shouldn't have any refraction either. Yeah, so that's all off. Reflection can be all off. This is seriously just this diffusion and then this backlighting. So I'm going to just take this up to like 0.75-ish and we'll, we'll, we'll do that. So there's only really two things you're doing. You're cranking up the weight and you're cranking up the backlighting. And that'll make these much, much brighter, uh, which you can see here in a second. So let me go over to my cheat notes here. Um, create new foam for material, hypershade adjustments or connections. Uh, foam, okay, we got to do that yet. The foam diffuse adjustments, we did that, and then render frame. So the hypershade connections. So this is what um, the uh, guy that was helping me on the forum really helped with. Is he showed me how to do the hypershade for this. Okay, so from here we're going to make the uh, shader based on density. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear the screen. So right here, clear the screen. And I'm going to go up to the material and... What I want here is I want to select my AI standard too, and then add that to my, add the behind the scenes stuff to this area down here. So I'm going to click here. So if this isn't empty, make sure you click this first to clear it, then click here to add. And then I'm going to get all the inputs and outputs. So I'm going to click this button right here. So there we have our standard surface shader. And, but we want our color, or actually, I'm sorry, um, we want our opacity to be dependent on density. So if I go back over here to um, water foam parameters, <clears throat> we are going to see that, where is it? Right down here. This is what this, uh, the guy on um, the Autodesk forums helped, helped me without, helped me with tremendously, is he made this user data float, a remap color, and then pumped that into the opacity channel of the standard uh, shader. So I'll show you how this is done. You just go in here and what you do is you, you right click and hold and then select the create node. Okay, 
So I want the I'm gonna go here and just gonna type in um, uh, user data float. Okay, so there's the one right there I wanna get. I'm gonna get that, and then I wanna get a remap color. So I'm just gonna go here and remap. That's all I need there. Remap color. And so now I have both those. And what I want to do is I want to expand these so I can see all the values. Um, and you can kind of see some of the stuff here, but if you right click on top of it, you can show all attributes. And we want this out transparency. Don't ask me why, we just do. And then here, um, I'm gonna right click, show all attributes. And then here, I'm gonna right click and show all attributes. I really don't want all of them. I just really want the opacity channel, but um, let me just see if I can get the, hmm, and there's a way to, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show them all. You'll see how big this is, <laughs> see how long that is. But what, what we'll do first is we'll take this uh, transparency out into the color, I believe. So let's just go check that. Yep, trans, out transparency into color and then out color, and it's gonna go to the opacity. Uh, which is way down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag these down here. So until we get to the opacity, at least close enough. There it is. So here we're going to take out color down to the opacity. And that's it. So I am going to shrink this down again. So it's not so big. And then grab and drag these so you can bring these up in a little bit cleaner. Okay. So the other thing you need too is the data float it needs to know what what's data what does what is the data going into it and what it needs is density. So you can just come up here and literally type in density and it has to be spelled exactly correct. And where I was confused by this is that when you attach this material to something that has an attribute, it's almost like a hidden attribute. And for our foam, the attribute name of density is already there. So if we just type in density here and we attach this material to the foam uh, particles, then this will all work. It'll know the density, it'll know to get it from the foam because the foam actually has an attribute named density. So you're not gonna find anything else about that in the, in the density material or anything like that. I'm sorry, in the, um, in the foam parameters. So just that's just how it works and it does work and, um, and we're done. So now we've set up the shader um, to actually have the, the weight at one, the backlighting, we're setting it 0.75 or whatever you like. If you want a little a, a brighter, you turn it up. If you want less bright, you turn it down. And that's how you set up the shader. Now we have a shader on here and let's see if I'm done. Creating a foam diffuse adjustments, already did that and then render a frame. So remember too that I already changed the these parameters in here. So this makes a difference too. This is part of that. You gotta have both the set and that stuff we just did in the hypershade window. So let me um, uh, just do a render here and we'll see if our foam gets added properly. And by the way, did you notice that render time was much, much faster? So I'll just pause here for a second. So take a look at that. Now that was, that, that to me looks great. I, I really like that look. Particles could be maybe a little smaller um, I could also add some blur to this, so I will, I will do that now. I'll add some blurring effect to this and we'll see if it blurs a little bit. Um, I'm not real experienced with the blur. Um, I think I just do it in the actual render, -er, um, the render settings here, but, but that, that's a nice look. The foam's decent, um, and you can see it's, it really is based on density here. Um, clearly these particles here are a little more dense together. I think than some of these ones back here that don't look quite as intense. So I think that's that whole pass the uh, opacity modifications we made based on density. Okay, so how you render these out into frames? It, it is a little confusing because this um, button right here in the render view will render whatever frame you're on. So here it rendered uh, frame five. You can see it's frame five. Um, but when you're trying to do a sequence, it's just a little different. Um, and easiest way to see it, at least the way I I know how to do it. And this uh, remember I'm kind of new to this. I go to render settings and I go into the common tab and I, I'm choosing JPEG format. So I'm going to be rendering these out as individual uh, JPEGs and then I'll use a, a different program like Premiere um, to put these together uh, and to make a video. Um, so 
the um, quality, I'm just going to leave it 100. I'm not going to change anything here. The only thing I needed to change was this because this was that single frame before. So I needed to change it to, um, I changed it to the underscore and then put the frame number there, uh, .jpeg it'll be. Um, and, and when you choose any of these other options, then you get, then this opens up and you can actually put numbers in here. So I've already exported some frames, or I'm sorry, rendered some frames. And I do this in sections here um, so I can get my computer back just for short terms. Um, so instead of going from one to 300 here, which I could easily do and just hit the escape key whenever I want, uh, get my computer back, um, the processing power that is, and, and then start again where I last was. So I've rendered out um, 30 frames here. Yeah, so here's the um, here's the underscore and there's the, um, the frame number and then the extension with JPEG. Um, and so I've got 30 of these rendered out. And so you can just keep coming over here and then changing these numbers. And then when you actually want to render it, you, know, you go to render and then you can render the sequence. Um, so if I just do that, it should start rendering from 31 to frame 40. Um, and anytime in there, I can just always hit the escape key and it'll stop. Um, and then I uh, can do whatever I want and then restart it again. So that's how you do it. So I'd hit this. I'm not going to do it right now. Um, and, and, and that's kind of it. The only other thing I, I changed was under system here. I changed the bucket size down to 32. So what that is is when when you're rendering, you see these squares, you know, as the render. Um, it, normally it defaults at 64, so they're bigger squares. Well, if you change it down to 32, it makes them smaller. So you start seeing stuff faster, um, but it also, too, it, it's redistributes the um, power of your threads or the processors a little bit better um, instead of getting one ch chunk stuck on one thread. Anyway, it's just a optimization thing that I heard do and so I do it. It doesn't matter if you don't change that though, it'll just make the render a little slower. Uh, so that's it and um, I'm going to try to render this out as much as I can. I don't know if I'll put it in this YouTube video because I want to get this YouTube video up. Um, at least you saw the foam and I'll, I'll do a render just one still with the foam, but I'm not sure if I'm going to wait 10 hours to render 300 frames of this. Uh, I'd rather get the YouTube video up a little sooner and then maybe has a separate YouTube video just of those 300 frames. And uh, I don't know. We'll see what I do here. So anyway, thanks for uh, watching and I hope this was helpful and um, please leave some comments and don't forget to give kudos to the guy that was helping me over here. Okay, so right here. Um, so he really helped a lot. Like I said, without him, I wouldn't have been able to do this. So again, thank you very much.